Hello and welcome to my F123 Lamborghini My Team Career Mode Here today for part 73 for the Dutch Grand Prix We're back after the summer break to continue our title fight with Lewis Hamilton Which I was expecting to do But Lewis Hamilton has decided to do a Nico Rosberg and retire mid-season So we're no longer in a title fight with Lewis Hamilton Mercedes have gone after Jack doing to replace Lewis Hamilton at Mercedes and we have decided to let go Carlos Sainz after very poor performances I was expecting him to be right behind us and we have signed Alex Albon a signing I've wanted to do since the very start of the career mode all the way back in season two and going the other way then is Carlos Sainz to Williams I feel a bit bad for him because that Williams is absolutely shocking this season but if he had good performances like he did in Monaco he would still be in our car that is your driver transfer news shocking news and this is the grid for the Dutch Grand Prix we are on pole and Jack Dewan on his first outing has put it on the front row at qualifying at George Russell who is starting P3 alongside Charles Leclerc it's Verstappen and Lando Norris Albon and Gasly Bottas and Pacheco round out the top 10 then it's the two Alfa Romeos then it's Stroll and Liam Lawson Joe and Piastri Ocon and Dennis Hauger Carlos Sainz and Nick De Vries and then the final row of the grid is Logan Sargent and Kevin Magnussen so we're here on the grid then ahead of the Dutch Grand Prix and we are now effectively leading the Drivers World Championship for what was turning out to be a very good battle with Lewis Hamilton we were 25 points behind coming into this race weekend but Hamilton decided that he didn't want his 8th world title and has taken retirement early and has left the sport mid-season that was our qualifying lap to put it on pole position we're hoping for a better race here than we had 12 months ago when we had that trolley train behind us and even before that when we had a DRS issue but we're starting on the softs going up to the mediums and we're racing in Zanfort then it's a poor start by Jack Dewan and George Russell has taken P2 in the Grand Prix he tried to get us down the turn, but he did go wide as we go through the twists and turns of the first couple of corners. We do run wide though at that bank corner. Can George Russell get the exit to get past us? No, he's too far back as we go sweeping now through the track. One of the best tracks on the calendar. We've, we've got a poor exit. George is all over the back of us. He's going to let two the outside. He's too far back. We've got a bit deep there though, and George has nearly made contact, nearly giving us a puncture. Coming out of that corner, Jack Dewan's only dropped to P3. We pull away though, is Jack is Dewan going to have a look at George Russell? He's too far back to do anything. Our new teammate Alex Albon, P5, that's good for him. So now we come out the final corner. And this is George Russell getting closer and closer to us. He's going to go to the inside and take the lead of the Grand Prix. Briefly though, because we're going to be later on the brakes. Keep it pinned around the outside and stay in the lead of the Grand Prix. He thought he had us to George. He got us a couple of seasons ago. And we had a DRS issue that cost us a chance of a win that day. Hopefully no repeat of that in this Grand Prix. Closer than closer though is going to go George Russell to the inside of us. He's taken the lead but once again we're going to leave it late around the outside of Tarzan Town 1. And we keep George behind once more on lap 5. We kept him behind for a couple laps. Lap 7 now though, a different part of the track in the DRS zone. He's a lot closer here with George. Down into the tight hairpin, chicane. Went for it on our inside, we keep it pinned round the outside, keep it behind. And that's job done for now. That is going to have a great 
exit round the banking and onto the pit straight. He's getting closer and closer to us. He's going to go to the inside. He's going to take the lead of the Grand Prix and this time we're too far back to go back round the outside of him. George Russell takes the lead of the Dutch Grand Prix. Now we just need to see if we can stay with him and try and get him back as quickly as possible. So it took us a couple of laps to eye up a move on George Russell. Lap 10 going on to lap 11. We're getting closer and closer to the back of that Mercedes and we're going to go down the inside very late. Down at turn one, take the lead is Jack going to have a look at his teammate. No, he's not, he's too far back. And if he can beat George Russell on debut, what a result that would be for him. As now George gets us on the outside, we're now side by side, we're doing, we're now going to try and get it pinned, we're going wheel to wheel, with Bush Mercedes, George really takes the lead of the Grand Prix, we just about keep doing behind us there, and we stay for now, P2, but we're all over the back of George Edge, we're going to go to the outside, George covers us off, it's very narrow and very tight through here. We did re-overtake George Russell and now the two Mercedes go wheel to wheel, doing on the inside and round the outside. George Russell keeps him behind, lap 13, going on 14, lap 14, now we're going to under pressure from George Russell, he really takes the lead in the Grand Prix. The only outside we go to try and keep him behind, we get a great exit off the turn one. We're still side by side with George, we're not backing out, so George Russell has to. And we keep the lead off the Grand Prix. This is a great battle with the Mercedes. If only Lewis Hamilton hadn't retired, and this was Lewis Hamilton, not George Russell and Jack Dillon. The end line of lap 15, we're boxing for one and only stop of the day onto the mediums. 20 laps these tyres have got to do. Hopefully they hold up. It's a very tight pit from here, so we need to be careful not to hit it. As we come out of the pits now, can we build a gap on George Russell here? Early on, George is gone to the hard tyres. Interesting. Strategy for him, maybe it works out, maybe Mercedes knows something that we don't. Lap 16 now though, everyone else is pretty much in. Albon going longer because he started on the mediums, but Dewan is in, so is Verstappen. And for some reason we have a very bad camera angle so we can't really see what is going on, but it's mediums for Jack Dewan. And he, so Mercedes split in the strategy. And where is he going to come out relative to us? Round the outside. We go through turn one, just to the other side of the barrier. And look at that, the, un the overcut has worked. Jack Dillon is now P2, he's jumped his teammate, and Max were far off jumping. The, the Mercedes of George Russell, either as we catch some slower cars in front of us, still yet to be it, we dispatch Esteban Ocon as quickly as possible. And hopefully, they, we can hold up some of those behind. This is Albon going longer. And you may have just seen that the two Mercedes have catched um, Ocon there just before Albon came out of the pits. And you can see here, George Russell's made a mistake at the first corner. He's locked up, he's gone wide and he's waved. Max, Max was tapping through. Max is now P3. Jack Dewan was all over the back of us, you can see here. Can he do a Max Verstappen and win on debut? I know 26, Spain 2016 wasn't necessarily Max's first race, but on debut for a new team, as we ran wide at the curb, run by Jack Dillon, leads the Grand Prix for the first time. We're going to go round the outside. That's going to turn to the inside line. We can't get the exit. Jack Dillon on his very 
first item in Formula 1 leads a Grand Prix. And now we need to try and get him back lap 24. Then on lap 25 we get closer and closer to the back of the Australian. To the inside he covers us off. We try and go to the outside. We can't get the exit on the mediums. Lap 29 we were eyeing up a move. We were just couldn't quite get close enough to have a go. But we were all over the back of him. Through turns 1, 2 and 3 and 4. We're going to try and take a wider line round the bank corner, try and get a better exit, but it just wasn't working for us. At the end of lap 29 though, this time we seem to be a lot closer. As now we're going to go to the outside and retake the lead of the Grand Prix, but we've gone very wide doing. It's still there, but with, even with going wide we've managed to get better traction out there and we retake the lead of the Grand Prix. This is Albon now in a queue because those hard tyres were not working on the Mercedes and there was a very big queue just behind him. And now Albon tries to overtake Big Gasly round the outside, gets the job done. That's a great move by Albon, but it all comes to nothing because that engine in the back of that Lamborghini has gone bang. Of course, he's not a brand new engine. He's taken over from Science's allocation from the first half of the season, and he was doing all right, Albon, in his first race up to that point. Lap 33, though, the one we were keeping behind as we catch now lap to cars, the two horses just in front of us, and we could maybe use it to the advantages. De Vries gets out of the way of us and doesn't get out of the way of Nick De Vries and, and we've gained a lot of time on Jack Dewan there we go past Magnus and he lets it through quickly is he going to do the same to Jack Dewan there or is he going to be held up Jack Dewan now lap 34 look at the gap the gap's over a second as he finally gets through the two lap down horses. Lap 35, this is going on to the final lap of the Grand Prix. And uh, that Ferrari engine in the back of the Alfa Romeo has said goodbye and has gone bang then, heading down into the first corner. Two retirements late on in this Dutch Grand Prix and it's game over for Enzo Fittipaldi there for Yuki Tsunoda and now Yuki Tsunoda Tsunoda retires and we're going to round the final corner it's got his redemption from Spa we win the Dutch Grand Prix a great race then and a magnificent victory here at the Dutch Grand Prix so, Natalie, what made the difference out there today? I feel consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the podium right now. It's been an interesting Grand Prix, that's for sure. So that's been then your Dutch Grand Prix, the win and the fastest lap from pole position. We really had to work for that one though. The Mercedes were very, very quick. Jack Dewan 
On debut, getting P2, beating his more experienced teammate George Russell, and ultimately with denied him victory on his debut in the sport, replacing Lewis Hamilton of all people. So fair play to him on that part. Max Verstappen won here last season. He's still going to get on the podium at his home Grand Prix. P3 for him then, a good day for Red Bull. Bottas also P4, and then George Russell P5, and Tail Pacher, who finished on the podium, him here last season comes home for P6. Down at the back, two retirements. Alex Albon, despite Yuki Tsunoda retiring, he's still beaten De Freeze Magnussen and Logan Sargent despite retiring on the final lap. So in terms of the Drivers' World Championship now, we now lead the Drivers' World Championship by 33 points. We've jumped Lewis Hamilton, who's no longer in it. And I think if you replace Jack Doohan with Lewis Hamilton today, what a battle that would have been. We wouldn't be leading the World Championship. So he's ruined this season as Lewis Hamilton. So battles now with Max Verstappen. I wrote two off fourth world title may be a little bit easier now but we've still got to go out and get it and work for it Max Verstappen isn't going to lie down too easy down at the back Albon now our teammates P21 and still your four drivers still yet to score this season hopefully at some point in the future that will change for Albon it's been a good day for Mercedes then in terms of the constructors they pulled two points on us after Spa the gap was 60 points it's going to be tight to win the constructors but we can definitely still do it I'm hoping that Albon's a bit more consistent than Sainz and there's still Williams who are still yet to score this season but that's been your Dutch Grand Prix then shocking news of Lewis Hamilton giving it up halfway through a season it's made our life a lot easier in terms of the championship but the race was very good we held off the two mercedes for a well deserved win we didn't bottle it like we did last time out in spa on the final lap but we go to our home grand prix as a team at monza next and i'll see you then goodbye